Leicester City have a penalty kick in the six minutes of injury time. Injury time. Injury time. Look out, takes. Almunia saves. Look out, follows in. Almunia saves again. And now Wapner on the counter attack. Forestieri. Oh, I don't believe this. Here's Hawk. Dini. I do not believe what I've just seen. Trudini has scored from a Leicester penalty that was saved by Almunia. Do not scratch your eyes. Do not scratch your eyes. What do we make? Because it's been a, an absolute pervading thing and it's still ongoing, especially as the transfer window has shut now. What are our thoughts on <laughs> Courtney, the Courtney Hawes situation? This this is completely our fault. You do realise that, don't you? As I'm beginning to do not scratch your eyes. Yeah. This is completely our fault. We interviewed him and he hasn't played. We interviewed the, our £5 million goalkeeper and he's he couldn't save a fart. It's it just... <laughs> It's just there's a curse, and it's it's on this podcast. It's us. It's Do us. not let us interview any new players. Let us interview the <laughs> shit ones that you want out the door. We'll get yeah. it ah. for you, Watford. Yeah. In which case, in which case, I think we should move to part two, where we look at the incomings, and I think we should decide exactly that. We, the panel, should decide whether any of these players, basically, if we think they're a bit dodgy. If we get three strikes, we're going to interview them and put the curse, put the put, no. put the curse of do not scratch your eyes on you. Are this, we all in favour of this? This is a good plan. Yeah. This is a good plan. Uh, yeah. I like this plan. Yeah. Excellent. I'll Coming to you. you part two. I've Go said on space this Courtney House typifies everything that's wrong with football. He's happy to take a big, big salary and not play the game. Now, if any of us did that in our working life, we'd get sacked. And I think he's an absolute disgrace. We've told him he's fit. Allegedly, Villa have told him he's fit. It's him that's saying he's not fit. He's a disgrace. He should get on the pitch and play football. He's on £50,000 a week. £50,000 a week. 99% of us would swap places with that with that with that guy overnight. Absolutely. And he feels hard done by to put out stupid Instagram messages that he's a prisoner. Yeah, yeah I was just gonna say that, Greg. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't yeah. mind being a prisoner earning fifty grand a week and doing half of nothing. There we go. I wouldn't mind being a prisoner earning 50 grand a week. Well, if, if there are any, uh, you know, kind of well-off dominatrixes who like the look of uh, Wendell, <laughs> who, who, who apply <laughs> to... Uh... I, think it's important, I think it's important to say as well, at least Greg's not angry about it. He's no. rather chilled out about that. Yeah, no, no, about very reserved. Oh, I, I, yeah, I am a bit angry about that one because I think it's really? a handicap. I have noticed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, love it, love it, love it. So let's get to part two then. Let's get to look at the incomings through January. So we're going to have a review of the players who have been incoming on the transfer window. We're going to have a look at uh, each one in turn, have a little bit about them, have a little discussion, and we're going to decide if anybody, if anybody at all, wants to say, no, nah, not really sure, not really sure. So the first one, Oh, so yeah, you're going to go. Yeah, yes or no. So the first player, uh, Ishmael Kone, uh, midfield. We've seen a few games from him. Um, Canadian, six foot two. I didn't think he looked six foot two, but there you go. But he's only 20 years old. He only started playing professional football in Canada for um, CF Montreal, who are part of the MLS. So before he came to us, all of the figures when we look at the pro appearances are how many appearances had they had before... They actually came to Watford in the first place. What are our thoughts about Ishmael Kone um, before and now that he's here? He's had a few appearances. First game was uh, away at Reading in the Cup. What are we thinking about him then, Greg? I'm thinking a good prospect. The boy has only made, as you rightly say, 26 appearances. He's young. He's got lots of development in him. To uh, to criticise him at this early point is totally unfair. The boy's been chucked in because we are just so depleted in midfield. On an, in another season, he may come in this January window and make the odd appearance. Uh, but he's had to come in and be a full-time 
player. Um, yeah, it's a yes for me. Lots of lots of promise in the lad. Lots of development in him. I think he will only improve. Excellent, excellent, Ian, sir. Any uh, any concerns with regards to our Canadian import in midfield? No, not at all. I, I agree with Greg. I think he's going to be um, a great player and has, has got really good good potential. So um, no, I, I think he's a I think he's a great signing. Excellent stuff, Justin. Any concerns about Kone? Are we going to see any strikes against him? Because three, and we're interviewing him, and then he's out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's it's a yes from me. I think from what I've seen so far, uh, I think he's he's a good player. As you say, he's only twenty. As Greg says, a good prospect. But I think he's um, looking as though he's made the step up to the championship. So, Kone is a yes from me. Carlos, Kone. Uh, yes, he is a yes from me. Um, I don't like the word prospect during this transfer window because prospects are not what we need. But I do agree. He has got a lot of potential. So uh, he is he is a yes, as I say. He is a yes. So no X's against him. I'm absolutely in favour of uh, of Kone. Yes, I think he's had a couple of games where he's where he's absolutely dipped. I thought Middlesbrough, he was so far off the pace. You know what? He didn't half have some company at being off the pace. He was chasing shadows and he was quite rightly hooked, in fairness, against Middlesbrough. But give the lad a bit of time to get a customised. I think he's got actually quite a good passing range. And when he first came into the, into the team, you could quite often see, you know, you know that thing that we do where we get the ball in a tight area and then we get the opportunity to release it and, and switch the play. And a Watford player goes, Oh no, we don't do that. We just play it back into the numbers where it's all tight and we're going to inevitably lose it. He was the one shifting it. And it, and of course, two weeks in, he's going, Oh, that's what we do. Don't we? We, we, we go back down that blind alley once more. I think that's where he's falling down. He needs to keep that, uh, uh, keep that keep that review going. So we like Kone. We're going to stay well clear of him. No interviewing Kone. Bad Carl if you go after him. We're not having that at all. So let's have a look. Who is next? The next up is oh, Pat Butcher. Yes. Oh, Pat Matthias Butcher. Martins. Yeah. Ma Matthias Martins. Now, there are people who have suggested that the talented Brazilian winger does in fact look like Pam St. Clement, who formerly played the character um, <laughs> Pat Butcher in EastEnders. Uh, we have acquired a mask and we can confirm there that they are, indeed, they are indeed actually, actually the same person. Um, <laughs> all I'm saying is... All I'm saying is Pat Butcher Day before he goes back to Udinese. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So he's a winger. He's from Brazil. He's five foot ten, but obviously with his hair, he's about six foot three sometimes. But he's only nineteen. In fairness to him, he's incredibly young. He is. He is literally the age that uh, that that Pedro was when he came across. He's had fifty one professional appearances at Fluminense, which, as we know, is now a a well trodden path from our point of view um, in terms of uh, in terms of bringing over players because we've had Richarlison, we've had, as I say, yeah, Pedro. And now Martins, what have we thought of what have we thought of him so far? Bearing in mind that obviously, should we interview him, we're only losing him for six months. We could almost do that and and not actually cause irreparable damage as we did with oh, I don't know Maduka Akoya. <laughs> what do we think? What do we think, Ian? What are our thoughts on uh, on on the on the blonde haired lad? I haven't seen enough of him, although he was obviously part of the um, goal that Adiemo scored. Um, uh, against against Black Blackpool when his shot was was saved, so um, I think he has got um, attacking intent in him. Whether whether he's the sort of player that's going to track back or not, I, I I don't know. But I'll go for a, go for a cautious yes. I, I think Ooh, a cautious yes. I like this. I like the caution bit. This is good. This is good. If we've if we've got worries, I think it's worth an X or two on occasions. Here he says, trying to insert some jeopardy. Um, <laughs> Justin, Justin. What Hello. do you think? What do you think of, uh, of 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 Pat Butcher, formerly barmaid at the Queen Victoria? I I think she was a great <laughs> actress. Yeah, yeah, she was fantastic, wasn't she? Um, I haven't seen enough of Martin. Hey, no, 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 she's still with us, of course. Yeah, um, she's in Radlett, seen... Greg. She's in Radlett. She's in... right. Pam Six Clement. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the history lesson on those East Indies. Um, I, I love the way that Greg says that, like like he's trying to remember who played alongside Dave Bamber in 1988. I think it was Bamson Clement. I, I didn't see the Middlesbrough game because I was doing something else, so I've only seen him for one and a half games. From what I've seen, he looks okay. Um, I, I think I think he's yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a cautious yes as well. Actually, on Martins, I think he's a yes for me. 
Wendover, what's your first? What are your first instincts uh, on uh, on on the on the uh, on the highlighted one? A probable yes. I think he's uh, another Gino shop window exercise. It nearly took the whole of the window to establish whether he was a Watford signing or he was a Uden AC signing as they were shuffling things behind the scenes. And that seemed to take the whole of the window. Did we actually want him or need him? I think we needed more experience, but he's coming to increase his value and one day sell him. Yes. Yes, he's a yes. There we go. So, any concerns at all, Carlos? Yeah, I've got to be honest. I, I think Greg's just hit the hit it on the head there. He, he's a load of potential. Again, not what we need. I think he is a money shop op, uh, you know, operative in the terms of that we're, we're going to try and make some money out of him. But are we going to make any money out of him? Because he feels like a player that's going to go to Udinese and make them a load of money. So, I, I find it just a bit of a, a shop window process, this, him, him coming to us. But... Having said that, he does get your bum off the seat. He does make attacking runs. He did look a half-decent player against Blackpool. Um, and, you know, that's no disrespect to them. They're a decent side. So, it is a very cautious yes. Oh, all very cautious yes is here so far. Yeah, yeah. This is good. This is good. Now, if we, 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 we might translate some of these into Xs simply because I have the graphic <laughs> available and I can't be bothered to not use it. <laughs> Seemed a complete waste of time. Otherwise, probably it's bad for normal. Um, no, yeah, I think I think he's I think he's useful. I think it's great that we've got an option. But I think a lot of these players we bought in because they're fit. You know, we actually have a player that 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 has got two legs and can run for a little bit. If we had a full team, would I see him getting ahead of of, of Semmer? In terms of if you look at Semmer's assist record, I'd say absolutely no. Um, in terms of it, is he useful in the squad? Absolutely, he is because he can potentially be a game changer. As when he came on against Blackpool, because he didn't just have a contribution to the Adiyemo goal, he also won the uh, the won the penalty, which was also a great ball from Kone, by the way. We were talking about his passing yeah. range, which was good. So again, a fine bill of health. Not words that have ever been used at Watford in the last month and a half. <laughs> Let Let's. Let's have a look. Who are we looking at next? Ah, oh, look at this fine, fine chiselled individual. And the the first player to have been brought in through the connection of, you know, Ben Manga and more importantly Helena Costa, who's now our head of scouting, former former youth coach at Benfica, which is where Yao Ferreira has come from. Um, right back or maybe right wing back. We'll see. Portuguese six foot one, which which helps. Although I think he, he's one of those who looks a bit taller than that. I think he might be six foot two ish. Twenty one years old, sixty one pro appearances. Although a whole host of those have been for Benfica B and outside of Benfica itself. So you know, there we go. But he's made a couple of uh, he's made a couple of appearances. It's uh, maybe maybe interviewing him wouldn't be so bad because he's already been hit by the Nigerian hamstring curse. Carl. What are your first thoughts about the now injured Yao Ferreira? Yeah, this is a simple one for me. He's a big fat yes. I really, really like the look of him um, and, and a player that makes us look stronger at the back and going forward. Um, and and you, you mentioned it before where, where he was linking up with uh, Pat Butcher. So I think uh, that's probably one of our best bits of business, uh, the two Portuguese lads, that, uh, but we'll come on to the other one later. Yeah, no, really, uh, really happy with this one, and it's a big yes from me. Oh, a sign of sign of great approval there from Carlos, uh, uh, Mister Mister Ian Bacon of Bedfordshire Hornets. Always nice. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the uh, on on the rather strapping, uh, good looking chap from uh, from Portugal? Uh, well, firstly, thanks for the plug, Peter. Um, uh, I, 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 th I think um, I, I think he's he's an excellent signing. Uh, agree with Carl. It's it's good to see that we've actually got. Um, um, and I don't know if I, at the end of this you ask us for our scores out of ten from the transfer window, but I I think he's a absolute a quality player that that we that we need. And albeit we haven't seen seen much of him, but we've spoken about his. Um, um, attacking threat and the and the goal that he that he scored. Um, nice to have a right back or a wing back that's taller than five foot four. Um, so um, so yeah, I, I, I think he's a great addition to the squad. And and, he, and when fit, he's he should be nailed on to be in the starting eleven every week. Mister Wendover Hornser. 
what are your thoughts? I came to you. I came yeah. to you after you'd only had forty-five minutes, and you did quite rightly say yeah, yeah, that's yeah. too that's yeah. too early to judge. No, I, I, I like him. Um, I think he's going to be better in a three as a wing back than in a, in a flat back four. Although I think he can operate the. I didn't initially think he could operate the flat back four. I think he probably can, but I think he'd probably prefer to to to, to, to bob on in a three. I agree with Ian. I like the the fact that he's got some height about him. So important to a full a full back to have a bit of height. Uh, helps helps you with the crosses with the balls coming in. Um, a massive big fat yes from me. A massive big fat yes. Ooh, I think we will good. eventually sell him one day and make a profit. I think he is he is a good good player. Yep. Nice. Justin, Portuguese right backs. Do you approve? Are they better than their Spanish equivalents? Yeah, I was going to say. Well, the Spanish equivalents sort of playing in midfield, isn't he? So, oh yes, that's yeah. that's a slightly yeah, he's, different. He's, he's... I, I like him. I like Ferreira. I think he's a he's he's a he's a good player. What I've seen so far, he looks pretty good. So again, it's going to be a yes from me. You're going to have to keep the yes graphic out for a bit, I think, Peter. Although you know, there's some more players coming. So. If only I thought of doing a yes one. Why would I say that? It's just like it's just like Britain's got talent. You know, you have the big X's and you get to three and then we kick him out. Oh um, right. Okay. Oh, oh well done. Here's a tick. No, 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 no. No, I I I'm in full agreement with everybody here. Yes, he's got to learn the kind of uh, attacking threat that you get in the championship, which is going to be play the ball wide and try and run him and try and go on the outside rather than always playing inverted wingers. Um, and he looks a little bit kind of suspect when he sees a ball coming from the right-hand side, you know, being kind of played played by a right-wing cross because he's not probably had to, to you know deal with that because in Portugal, they all play 4-2-3-1 and they all invert or cut in through the inside and, and, and play lovely, lovely little technical, technical kind of tippy-tappy football. So he's got somewhere to learn. He's got something to, uh, to, to, to kind of adjust to. But yeah, I think, uh, I think he looks pretty good. But also, of course, we have <laughs> his fellow countrymen. Now... Who wants to have the first go at butchering that name? Um, <laughs> Enrique Arouche, I believe, is the uh, is is what I heard him say. But it it could just have been me sneezing. Who knows? Talented forward, Portuguese, six foot tall. Um, so he's he's not uh, he's not bad in the air. He will compete for it, but it's not going to be his strength. Uh, Twenty one years old, only six. Uh, sorry, only ten of those appearances, those seventy appearances he's had, have been for the first team at Benfica. So 60 games have been played at the uh, at, at the, the uh, Benfica B level. So we'll see. We only saw a brief bit about him, but uh, pretty good reports about him before we signed him, weren't there, Greg? Yeah, there were. Only seen 45 minutes, but his movement looked nice. It, you know, he did look, look, look the, his movement, and he, he does he just does look a footballer. He does look a footballer. The proof of the pudding will be in the eating. Uh, though, yeah, I, th I, th I think I think he's a footballer. However, let's be no, you know, let's not kid ourselves. We've only got him for half a season, and Watford are making a big deal about us getting him. Uh, he's here to go in the shop window. Uh, mm -hmm. Benfica seem to be top heavy of strikers, and I think he's in the top in the shop window to potentially sell. To, to the Premier League, but you know, you know, let's let's make it uh, take advantage of it. Yeah, I I, th I think he's going to be quality. Is okay, so there's a yes there, Ian, sir. Um, I haven't seen seen his um uh, cameo appearance at, at Middlesbrough, um, but I'm going to say yes. But I think there's a huge amount of pressure on on his young shoulders in terms of us getting goals, and that goes for all of the all of the strikers, but. You know, we only scored four league goals in um, in January, and that's pretty pathetic, really. So he's he's got to come up with the goods sort of pretty pretty quickly and and start and start firing. But I'm going to say going to say yes, but I think there's there's quite a bit of pressure on him to to uh, to deliver. Justin, you didn't get to see the uh, the Middlesbrough game, but uh, any concerns in the build up, or are you quite excited to see what this uh, what this young lad can do? Yeah, I think I am excited to see what he can do, but. Yeah, I don't know, Peter. I really don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure how to call this one. I think if he gets a good run of games, then there's a potential for him to do well. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say yes, but that is based on 
all of the hype that I think it was, wasn't Bilic going absolutely mental about him when he heard he was coming. He was going, oh my God, I can't believe we've signed this player. Was it him we were talking? He yeah, was talking yeah. about? Bilic <laughs> is very enthusiastic about both him and Davis playing together. And that's something you can see because when one's was... got really good movement and the other right. one can actually be a big lump and can drop deep and win headers and flicks and play ons if he starts to release the ball a bit earlier. But sorry, yeah. go on. We haven't played two up front for a long time, have we? Long time. Um, the se- the second half on on Saturday against Middlesbrough, he played both okay. uh, yeah. right. both Adiyemo and uh, and the ladder Roche up up okay. front trying to do it, which was which was kind of enthusiastic. It was kind of it was a sort of a four four two esque kind of uh, uh, rather than a four two three one for the first time in a, in a while. But uh, so we shall see. We shall see. I'll say yes. I'll say yes because I think there's a lot of hype behind it all. But sometimes that's never a good thing. But yeah, I'll say yes for now because I know who's coming up towards the end of this. I can, uh-huh. feel, a no. I can feel a no coming on towards the end. But that's, that's oh yeah, I've got, I've got a no. I've got a no soon. I reckon as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same. Same here. <laughs> so, Carlos, are you? Uh, are you? Are you? Are we just basically having a clean sweep from uh, from the you young want, lad? You want me just Henry. to say no so that you can use your graphic? Would that? Well, make no, you it's already better? free. It's already no. free too anyway, so it wouldn't make any. Oh, no. Okay. All right. So <laughs> no, so, I'm not going to sulk. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, very, very much on the on the base of what the guys have just said. I, I think I, um, Ian's just just pretty much took the words out of my mouth. There's going to be so much pressure on him to get goals and the championship takes the best of them a, a while to get used to. So I, I, my only fear for him is that he doesn't hit the ground running. Um, so the, the, the sooner he hits hits the onion bag, the better. So I'm going to say yes, based on he's very highly thought of at Benfica and, and the hype surrounding him. But as Ian said, he, he's, got to, he's got to hit the ground running. Very good, very good. I will just say this at this point. Other pointless graphics are available. <laughs> Look at oh, this. this. Oh, loving this. Hello, That's that on a horse. Fantastic. Check Look me on a Putney horse. Joe. Oh, Putney. <laughs> a ledge. And the answer, and the answer is yes, quite a lot to the question. How much fucking time have you got on your hands at the moment? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, so. Younger Rosh has got there. Now we're really starting to get into the players that we really haven't seen. But we want to know, have you got any worries, any concerns, any reason why I can use this fucking graphic that I seem to have <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure there's a note coming up. I think I know who it's... I think we have were you going got to be a, have you got another is. striker that we've signed recently? Maybe put that one up now. Let's do that one. <laughs> just, 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 this, is, this is this transfer window. That's oh, what okay. I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so Ryan Porteous... Uh, what do we think uh, of, of Ryan Porteous? Long been, uh, long been linked. It seemed to have taken an age to to, to bring him in. Uh, Centre back played at Hibernian, six foot two. Seems to be quite a dominant player. Um, 23, 23 years old. One hundred and twenty pro appearances because thirty of his one hundred and fifty appearances were at Edinburgh City, who were kind of playing in the kind of Lowlands leagues at the time. So one hundred and twenty pro appearances, but you could say a little bit more. You know, one hundred and fifty games at, at, at a good level. I would certainly suggest that the uh, the Lowlands teams are, are that is is quite a lot of experience for you know what is a a, a twenty one year old, a twenty three year old. So you know, somebody we're bringing in there who seems to be. Uh, you know, we've seen a number of players who've got very few pro appearances. He seems to have quite a lot. What are your thoughts on him, Wendover Horn? Did you say Nolan League? I didn't know that the Nolan sisters. L- Lowlands, Lowlands. There, there are the Lowlands. Highlands and the Lowlands. Oh, Lowlands. I thought you said Nolans, yeah. and I was thinking of the lovely Nolan sisters. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course you were, Greg. <laughs> yeah. The car bolts out of them at the other side of the camera, of course. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and if if you would like to uh, send in uh, via social media which one of the Nolans we should be ordering for takeaway for Wendover Horn, then do let us know. <laughs> yeah, um, I think he's what I've only seen what I've seen on YouTube, and yep. I've only seen what I've read about what Hibs fans think of him, and based on solely that. It's a yes. I get the impression he's a leader. I get the imp- impression that he'll get in the ref's face. I get the impression that he might get the odd red card, which actually I don't mind because we haven't got that type of player in, in the squad. So it's a big, big yes 
from me, and I think he could potentially be a future Watford captain. Ooh, very good, very good. Ian, any you, now I know you have a good friend who lives up in Scotland. Any any insider tracks that we may have on uh, on Mister Porteous? Well, like Greg said, um, I think the Hibs fans were really disappointed to see him go. Although the the writing had been on the wall for quite some time, it was quite unnerving though at the beginning of the window because there was talk about, oh, was he going to go to Udinese or, or you know, we were going to do it, do another sort of Martin's dodgy deal on it. Um, but I'm I'm glad we've we've got him over over the line because I, I agree with everything that that Greg has just said. And on top of that, he shows great levels of shit housery um, for opposition players. So I, th- I think that's exactly exactly what we what we what we need. I, I think he's going to be a like a brick wall of a defender, hopefully, and hopefully build um, partnerships with um, Cathcart and Sierra Alta and perhaps somebody else we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, so yeah, I, I think he's he's an absolute great signing. First first mention of shit of the day. Well done, sir. Well Thank done, you. excellent. Thank you. And uh, and anybody who's built like a brick shit house is very good. I have to say though, I do have to say, if you see Ryan Porteous with a beard, you go, okay, all right, he's doing a bit of a brave heart. When he's shaved, he looks about twelve. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> That's one of the many things that I'm not prepared to say to your face, Ryan. That's all I'm saying. So, <laughs> Carlos, Carlos, are we are we getting to itch towards the no button? I suspect not. No, no. Ian's again stole my thunder a bit. He is a he seems like a proper shit house, which is what we need um, in 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 the centre of that that defence. So for that alone, it's a massive yes. And I think. I think I I judge some of our transfers and he feels, I don't know what you guys think, he feels like one of those players that we've been linked with that we've actually got. We seem to get linked with quite a few players and they they just don't materialise for whatever reason. You can easy steal them or whatever. But this this seems like the first one that we were actually linked with for a while when we managed to to get over the line. So for that and the fact that he's a proper, proper shithouse, I think it's a yes. (laughs) Uh, well, we're saying shit house. Good, excellent. Justin, are you all in favour of shit houses wearing uh, wearing the yellow? I am. And uh, any player that comes in and it means that William Trusty Kong's got to make a space for him, I'm all for. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a yes from me, just just for that. Yes, yeah. And all I will say is, um, we may have, along with a. About 20,000 other Watford fans have questioned sometimes how good a defender William Truster Kong was. As a guy, he was a lovely fellow. Everybody who met him spoke worlds about him. But I think he's going to be doing a fine job for Watford on the Amalfi Coast in Italy now that, now that he's no longer here. So, so there we go. Ryan Porteous, welcome. Who are we going to look at next? Hey! Oh, hey, now. Here we go. Here we go. Now, get your button ready. Yes, right. So, <laughs> Brit he No, he's not. He's forty. thirty. He's thirty. Oh. But that just goes to show you how shit Wikipedia was. I didn't catch it. <laughs> anyway, he's thirty. So, Brit Asombolonga, uh, and he's not a centre back, and he's not from Netherlands. This is this is not. This is this is hoot. Uh, British on Belonga is is thirty years <laughs> old. He's a striker. I don't worry. This uh, this will all come good in the edit. Trust me. <laughs> he's he's five foot ten. He's thirty years old, and he has made about three hundred odd appearances. And he came in from from one of the Turkish teams, Denizspor, uh, where he had been when he since he left. Middlesbrough, where he, he has scored goals in the championship. We have asked, can we have players who are not potential, who have done it, and you know, who can basically, quote unquote, put a shirt on and go and do a job? Do we think that uh, Brit Eklund, Basong, um, uh, along Basonga, um, is somebody who can do this? Let's turn to Carlos. Hold on, let me get my graphic ready. <laughs> It, it, it's, I'm sorry, and I don't mean him any harm because of obviously his history with us as a football club. But no, no, I don't. I don't think he can. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I don't think he can. So for me, so for me, I would love to interview him. Oh, all, all I'm going to say is anybody listening to this on audio, I, 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 if I've come up with an interesting sound effect, you're welcome um, to make up for that. He's, he's, he's been the first person to to get exed. 
which isn't good. Bearing in mind, he's an ex-player. You don't think he's the right person. You don't just don't trust him. Bearing in mind, he's only got a six-month contract. There's not a huge exposure. Yeah. We needed somebody else in the house. You just just don't think he's he's the right I, I made of the right stuff I anymore. Just, I just don't think he's the right stuff. Yeah, and you you've just mentioned he scored goals in the championship, but I, I, you know if you speak to a Middlesbrough fan, they were quite happy to see the back of him. They overpaid for him. They overpaid his wages, and when he went to Turkey, they were they were more than happy. So I don't know. I, look, I wish I I wish him all the best. I hope I hope he scores goals and he he, he gets his his career sort of back on track. But I just can't see it happening. Oh, okay. So we turn to uh, we turn. Let's go Buckinghamshire way. Let's go to Mr. Wendover Horn, sir. What are your thoughts on former Watford player Brit Asombalonga? Well, I read a tweet from a Middlesbrough fan saying, what is the Watford scouting network like? Because they've got Fletcher and a Somber on their books. <laughs> I saw that as well. I saw oh, that dear. Too. That's even yeah. worse. <laughs> Which didn't install me with the greatest level of confidence. However, he did well at Peterborough. He's done well elsewhere. It is zero risk. It is a typical Gino punt. He's a what, you know, he's come through the ranks. There's not going to be so much pressure on him. I'm not going to give it a total no red card, a no, but I'm I, I'm going to be on the fence on this one. Oh, he's falling short. He's falling short of that. That's fine. Uh, we'll uh, well, let's find out what other people like. Just uh, just just made me realise the last pop star I saw hanging from a door like that was Michael Hutchins. Never mind. <laughs> so let's turn. Let's turn. <laughs> what? You can't say that. <laughs> you know, you know, it wasn't it was Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Dave Messenger. No, no, that wasn't me. That was somebody who looked like me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we'll turn then. We'll turn then from uh, from that merry <laughs> note. Me that as I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, sir. Justin, no. what do you think, sir? Um, well, looking at his uh, career trajectory, uh, some massive teams he's played for, of course. Wheelstone, uh, Braintree, uh, Southend United. You know, we're talking top level uh, oh, career here. here yeah. um, and more recently, Adana Demis, Demirspor, who, of course, I've never heard of. Dennis underwhelmed. Sport. Yeah, totally underwhelmed. Um, when I first heard it, I thought it was a joke. Um, I'm really not impressed with this signing whatsoever. It's a cross from me, and no doubt we'll be talking to him very, very soon. Ooh, we're up to two. Oh, oh dear. dear. This, all rests, this all rests on Mr. Bacon. No, no, Peter's got a, 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 a one oh, as well. So, one, yeah. Yeah. And, and I've got a vested interest in just using the graphic, really. Let's Peter. be honest with you. I've got, <laughs> I've got to make up for Michael Hutchins, Gate. Before we do that, let's turn Bedfordshire away to Ian and say, Ian, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Is this uh, is is this a, a judicial uh, decision or is it one that's been made in excess? Oh, oh, no, oh no. wow! Round of applause there, please. God. I'll be here all week. I yeah. certainly don't need him tonight. Anyway, no. that was another one. But, uh, move on. Here. Yeah. Um, yeah, good, yeah, good. Graphic time, Peter. Um, this this just smacks of we need a centre forward who the hell is available and is is free. Yeah. Um, no, the, uh, I, I can't see. It. I mean, I'm, I hope I'm wrong and he scores goals for us, but um, uh, no. Oh my send god! An email then. I best send yeah, an email. You send an email. We're we're gonna be interviewing Brit um, <laughs> and asking everything he knows about. Australian pop music from the 1980s. Excellent <laughs> stuff. There's a theme. There's a theme. I think it's very important that uh, Do Not Scratch Your Eyes, as a podcast, knows where the line is and we drive straight across it, <laughs> needless to say. <laughs> so, Brett, look forward to interviewing you, sir. So, let's turn Let's turn well, to, on, to Peter, somebody. Are you, are you a yes or a no? You didn't I, sort of give your... It doesn't really matter. He's already been, he's been, oh, the panel have he's, voted. He's, uh, he's okay. getting interviewed. Okay. I would I would say I would say that for six months, bearing in mind we've got 
Arush, who we kind of have to play a fair amount because even if it's not contractually agreed with Benfica, they wanted to have, if we didn't play him in 75% of the games, there was going to be a million pound bonus. That took a long time for them to take it out um, because Watford didn't want to do that. They wanted to use him as and when they wanted to use him. But if you've got Keenan Davis and you get Yao Pedro back and you've got um, Arush and you've got, um, you know, kind of, you've also got somebody else who can come on who knows the league. It's only six months with an option. If we go up, we can lose him, you know, and, and any wages that he's bringing. We're not like Middlesbrough. We're not paying anything for him. I can understand why the deal has been done. It's a very, very low risk option. Is it something that fills me with joy? No. But it's the fact that we've had three X's finally come up. Yes, absolutely. So no, <laughs> no, three X's is all we need. But let's go across and see somebody whose uh, whose details may look mysteriously like British Ombalonga. <laughs> Were British Ombalonga somebody else? The excellently, excellently titled Wesley. Now, how are we pronouncing this one? Hoot, 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 hoot. Well, hoot. I think we should. I think we should all hoot, hoot. We're going hoot. He right. now he, he is a centre back from the Netherlands. He is six foot two. He is twenty eight year old, just like obviously Britta Sombolonga isn't. Uh, Two hundred appearances in total. His last club was uh, was Anderlecht. He was also previously at Southampton, and it, an interesting one. He was at Lazio earlier on in the in his career, and Lazio he, he did he did well. And he kind of moved away. And came they actually brought him back on loan. For, for about 20, 20 games, um, not last season, season before. So, you know, there's some pedigree with, with, with this with this lad. And I will say one thing before we put this to the vote. His, uh, his other half and he are very good-looking couple. Um, uh, Heide Helgeson, some challenge for you there, mate. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, so I don't... I, I, exactly. I'm. I'm not. You know, I'm just saying. If we could interview them as a couple, I'd be all favour for it. But there we go. <laughs> Justin. Justin. Hello. What. Yeah. What. What do you think of the uh, of the Netherlands international Wesley Hoot? Wesley. Yes. Well, uh, 28 years old, 200 appearances. That must mean he's played a few games and should know what he's doing. Uh, so that's all I know about him. Obviously, because we haven't seen him play yet. So uh, let's have a cautious yes for Wesley. Okay, Carlos. What do you think about the ex-Southampton uh, man? Now, Southampton fans are rather split on him, I believe. But uh, what are your yeah. thoughts on him? Yeah, no, no. I, I was just going to say that. They are. Um, but can you base his career at what happened at Southampton? Probably not, because it, it's a bit of a mental club at the moment, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, I think he's I think he's a really good signing. An actual bit of, bit of clever business for me. Uh, a player that isn't really getting selected at Anderlecht's all that much player that's got a lot to prove he's come over to us to try and sort of restart and if he's using us as a stepping stone he's 28 or you know all the better so i actually think he's going to be um he's going to be a decent signing so i'm i'm happy with this one so it's a yes for me oh there's contentment there's contentment the uh, the bloodlust has been sated by uh, by by the sacrificial it, lamb that was put on the lawn. That, i have i have just seen a picture of his missus so that's why i've gone the big yes <laughs> Yes, yes. But on the other hand, if we if we vote exit, we might get to interview her. We might be able to go, oh, look, she's really nice. No, I don't think they, they don't allow people that look like me to interview people like that. Yeah, no, similar, <laughs> similar. Let's, let's go to Ian, the the, uh, the voice of reason. Ian, sir, what are your thoughts? Uh, have you seen anything of Mr. Hoot? No, or Mrs. Hoot, for that matter. But that'll be what I'll be doing after this podcast. Um <laughs> Um, Hoot, this is there, no. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's not his wife. Um, That's the Mr. Couple. Anyway, carry on. Oh, thank you. Thank you for clearing that up, Justin. Um, <laughs> <all right. laughs> um no, I, I I agree with what, what Carl said. It seems a, a really sensible um sensible signing. And you know, 200 appearances at 28, he's got some pedigree behind him. So yeah, I think he's a good signing. So it's a yes from me. Mr. Wendover Horn, we turn Buckingham Way. Interviewing this man is now out of the question already. So you can, uh, <laughs> you can, you can, you can lean back and say, "No, what have you seen of him on uh, on on YouTube or on on your on your research of said Wesley Hoot?" Hoot. Are we going to say his brother a boot? Or we could be Hoot in a boot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work because his brother would have the same surname. Um, who, who knew? Who knew? Michael Hutchins was the high point of the game. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah. I just, 
<laughs> when I say high point, I don't mean no, no, <laughs> no, no. no. Just... Um, the Southampton view on him isn't mixed. Actually, the Southampton view is is pretty crap. Um, <laughs> but he was replacing, but he he was replacing Van Dyke, and he did come for a hell of a lot of money. He's left footed, so it's a yes from me because we haven't got a left footed centre back. Uh, we could now play three at the back, and uh, it'll probably be fine for the championship. So it's a yes. And I think I think the signing of Porteous and Hoot, as you say, a left sided centre back is far more important in a flat back three or a, a, a back three, I should say, than it is in the four. Do we do we all suspect that that's the way we're going? We talked about wing backs versus full backs earlier on in terms of Kamara and also in terms of Ferreira once he has his hamstrings given back to him. Um, do, do we suspect that from the from the dealings that we've done so far that we are looking at three at the back? I think so. I think so. I've, I've found yeah. a bigger problem. Ooh. I've discovered a I've discovered a bigger problem. Do you remember somebody at the club called Andre Gray? Oh God, no, uh, never heard of him. He's right, coming back. To, he, no, no, he had a really yeah. famous missus who was uh, a pop star and yeah. was more famous yeah. more famous than him, and it used to cause him quite a few problems. Um, Mrs. Hoot <laughs> is incredibly famous in, in in some parts of the world. Five point eight million subscribers she's a singer Ooh. so i'm basically saying that he could turn into our new uh our new mr gray to having well, a bit if, of a complex that his missus is more famous if he's able to smash the ball anywhere but goal i think we'll all be happy as he's playing at the back that'll do um yeah, yeah he'll, no, he'll, let, he'll, he'll, he'll probably score as many goals as well yeah more, yeah to be probably. fair he probably will cleverly he's got a famous missus as well um i think carl yeah 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 very true where's he at the moment <laughs> I didn't know. It's it's cleverly it's cleverly Mrs. a celebrity of sorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's um something one of these reality TV programs, isn't she? Oh, you know. only way is Essex or whatever it is. I'm Don't sure. I'm like sure it. she's Tower thoroughly Tower. lovely, but I couldn't Tower. give a shit about reality TV yeah, people. Yeah. There we go. Well, anyway, I'm going on anyway. Love Island next year. Is you're going you on Love Island. <laughs> Did Jesus Christ, I'll be watching that if you go on Love Island, Greg. <laughs> what are, they, what, are they being sponsored by Deliveroo? Are you going to rock up in a bike with a pizza? What's going on? <laughs> that's, that's too much information, isn't it, really? Can you imagine that? Oh, goodness uh, me. Yeah. God, that, that, Fat boy, Love Island. Poor old Mrs. Wendover. What does she deserve to be betrayed on reality TV by you? Honestly, <laughs> shocking behaviour. Shocking behaviour. Anyway, has anybody not had a vote on Hoot? I think we've all, I think, well, basically, we went to Carl. He's been basically looking at pictures ever since. <laughs> yeah, we've lost him. He's, he's, yeah. he's lost. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm still here. Don't worry about me. Yeah, Hoot, Hoot sweet. Boom. Right, <laughs> let's have a look. Now, I'm not, I'm not suggesting anything, but we may be journeying to the Valley of the Exes. What do we think of oh. not signed in the window? We're going to look at two players who were signed... Uh, outside of the window, Leandro Bakuna was signed as a free agent because we had nobody who still had workable limbs. And Leandro Bakuna came in midfield. He, he plays for, for Curaçao. He's six foot two, apparently. Although, hey, this is one of my stats, so you know they're unreliable. Um, <laughs> he's 31 years old. 395 pro appearances. Four for Watford he's played. So he's currently on 399 not out. Um best figure since Brian Lara for a long time and he was signed obviously he wasn't because he was a, a, a free agent but what are our thoughts on Leandro Bakuna best known for standing in relative close proximity to Mario Gaspar for long periods of time really uh Wendover what are your thoughts based on what we've seen we so up, far from we were, uh from... we were up shit creek so we had no option I think if we get our players back we're not going to see a lot of him he doesn't particularly look fit. Uh, he did okay at Norwich. It's one of them, isn't it? It's one of them. Um, it's neither a yes. Or it's a no, it's a, I don't think he's very good. So, uh, no. But, but, but we, were, we, were up shit, we were up shit creek, so we had no option. 
is, is it is it an amber more than a red? It's definitely not a green. We know that. But uh, okay, you either I'll, decide I'll if it it's red, amber or if it's red. I'm giving it a red. Ooh, he's gone and red, red everybody. everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. tipped him over the edge. Okay, with him, but he tipped him over. Oh, we've got somebody in yeah. danger of having an interview with Do Not Scratch Your Eyes. Cool, blimey. So, Leandro, tell us about your uh, time with Watford. And that was Leandro Bakuna, everybody. That's <laughs> going to last a long time, isn't it? Let's turn Let's turn Bedfordshire away. Ian, sir, what are your thoughts on Leandro Bakuna? Positive, negative, or just don't give a shit? Uh, the third option, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, yeah, like 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 Greg, like Greg said, he 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 came in when um, we had a spare shirt and nobody to wear it, and yeah, he hasn't really set the world on fire. He he, he came on for about thirty five seconds in the second half at Reading in the FA Cup, and his hamstring went, which um, yeah. which was quite quite funny actually. Yeah, no, it's it, it's a no for me, Peter. Ooh, we've got two X's going on. We've got two X's. Oh, this is exciting. Right, let's go. Who's who's going to be able to basically uh, put the Leandro to sleep here? Uh, let's call. Let's go. Let's go to Justin. Justin, sir, what are your thoughts on Mister Bakuna? A big fan of him, I'm sure you are. Oh, you know I am, Peter. Um, I think when you have to sort of look up the international country that a, a player plays for, Curacao. Where's that? Would you know where that was? Any idea, Curacao? Is it one of the Caribbean? I, I don't even know where this is. Is it just Anyone? off the Isle of Wight? I don't know. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like <laughs> no one knows where Curacao is. I thought it was a drink, that awful blue shit that you get in pubs. What is that blue drink at the pub? I've never had that. I believe it. Oh, so, it's always, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It is. Yeah. It's an orange flavoured drink, isn't it? I've never heard of it. Anyway, so, um, no, I, I'm not a fan of the Andro Bakunas. You can put three crosses up, Peter. Um, <laughs> We've got another one. Another yeah. interview on the way, everybody. Yeah, Hello, yeah. is that the one for communications department? Yes. No, you can't talk to him. Leave him alone. <laughs> So that's uh, there's, there you go. Are we going to make this entire podcast sponsored by Castle Main Forex, Carl? Yes, we are. This is the new. Sponsor. I wish I thought yeah, of that uh, graphic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but uh, no, Ian summed it up. Uh, the Reading game for me, where he came on for for a, a millisecond and, and done his hamstring, was just enough for me. I, I, I yeah. If, if we had no, um, he said he reminds me of somebody that's just walked into a room and found a Watford shirt and gone, oh. So you want to put this on? And, okay, I could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just he's walked into the wrong room somewhere. He's got in the wrong taxi or something. Something's fucking happened along the way. But yeah, he's he's not for me. I'm afraid. Well, what can I say? I can. Yeah, I I agree with Greg's first sentiment here. You know, he was. Uh, we needed literally kind of dead bodies propping up on the Alamo wall. We had to bring somebody in at short notice and, and he was an odd one to bring in because he'd played three games in 2022 for Cardiff and been out until June. He then played two games for Curacao. Yeah. Um, one, one in June, he hadn't played again, you know, kind of since he managed to get through Norwich unsurprisingly looking, looking not particularly fit. He'd done a, a few kind of uh, training stints with Birmingham and they'd gone, no, I don't think we'll take you up on that. I don't want it. Don't want him, but um, a fair play. He's turned up. He's tried to do stuff. He's not been very good. Once players are, once players are fitting back, we won't have to worry about him at all. Now, I've just if, found where Curacao is. Uh, it is in the South Caribbean Sea. Uh, in the Dutch Caribbean region, uh, it is a constituent country, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, uh, along with Aruba and Bonaire. Uh, it forms the ABC Ooh. island. So there you go. I would never be able to show you that on a map because I haven't got a, a clue which part of the Caribbean that's in, apart from the south, I now realise. So there you go. Well, there we go. So let's go to another player we signed, not in the transfer window, but after the last transfer window closed. But there's some interest in here, and I imagine most of you will go, who? <laughs> who? Jorge <laughs> Hurtado, who is a 19-year-old oh. forward from Colombia, or Colombia, as I put there. Um, and he's only had 25 appearances at, uh, at Real Cartagena. He has now moved to Independiente of Medellin, which is obviously a much bigger city in uh, in in Colombia and he's actually just going to basically be playing there. He's in their squad for 2023 season, which started literally yesterday, um, uh, yesterday or the day before he wasn't in their match day squad and he is due to be coming over in the summer. However, 
this was something that they were waiting to be registered and it hadn't been registered in terms of Watford's uh, involvement with him as of this time yesterday. So there's some paperwork that needs to be done as to whether he'll be joining us in the summer or whether or not actually it might be the, the, the full end of 2023. Um, therefore, we kind of like get him in the January window actually coming along. But he's on a six year contract. Uh, he's been signed. He's not played many games at all, but it could be one of those other South American talented forward players that uh, that the, the Pozzo network have got a hold of alongside obviously Britta Somba longer um, and thought, yeah, let's, let's bring him in and have a look. What do we think about this player that until the last two minutes you'd never heard of? Justin. Thanks for letting me go first. Uh, it's oh, a no from me, Peter, because I don't know anything oh, about the man. Oh, 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 there we go. Because he's coming from somewhere near the Caribbean of which Justin is for some reason kind of really upset about this evening. <laughs> he, gets, he gets lost and confused, yeah. Went, went over horn, sir. Went over horn. Talking about lost and confused, bus lanes, Birmingham, etc. What are your thoughts on uh, on young Jorge Hurtado, who you don't know anything about? He could be Jao Pedro or he could be Alberto Pedrando. Who knows? Another Gino, another Gino, South American punt. Who knows? So, okay. Yeah. I can't give it a red cross because I've never seen him. I'll, I'll, I'll go with it because largely we've done all right out of South America, apart from Mr. Penaranda. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Is he Yao Pedro or is he Adalberto Penaranda? There's a post-production graphic to add in if ever I've thought of one. <laughs> Ian, sir, Ian, what are your thoughts on, uh, on the man, not from Leighton Buzzard, but from a little bit further west from Colombia? What are your thoughts on him? <laughs> Uh, well, I've never heard of him, and quite frankly, I think you're making it up, Peter. Um, so um, I'm going to say no. <laughs> I, it's more I, than I, possible, Ian. It's more than possible. Yeah. But, but to based be honest on with the, you, but based on I, I think it's possible, and I did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, 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 it's a no for me, Peter. It's, it's a no. It's a no. It, oh. it's, it's a no on the suspicion that deviousness and skullduggery is taking place in the remnant household. This is probably true, but I don't know anything about it. Anyway, <laughs> Carlos, what do you think, sir? Do you think I've made him up or is he real? Or should we try and interview the man? How is your Spanish, by the way? Hi, Jerry. Uh, si. Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> Dos so mesa, por favor. Ball, then, you're ah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty bad. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd be honest, Peter, and I, I mean this with the greatest of respect. I don't give a fuck. Quite honestly, because <laughs> we'll, prob we'll probably never see him. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. I, I just think the, buying four, you know, fourth division Colombian player or where, wherever he is 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 risky business for the championship. They don't tend to really sit very well when they're getting <laughs> smashed up in the air by. God knows whoever. So, yeah, for me, just because um, you spelt Columbia incorrect and I'm probably never going to see him, I'm going to say no. Oh, look at this. We've got another one who's been who's been <laughs> X'd out of, out of all existence. This is this is basically the shortest interview. That's going to be shorter than Leandro Bacuna. Basically, yeah, we're going to say two hello. Beers from him and that'll be the end of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> If he starts becoming a waiter, then that could make sense. Other than okay. that, nothing at yeah, all. Yeah, nothing yeah. at all. So there we go. There we go. There is the uh, there is the the players that have been bought in. The players that we have released, of course. Pollock has gone off on loan to not going to be missed. I don't think. Not going to be. Do missed. we? Old, no. Old fifty p head. No. 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 I think he has He's to go out. We just bought in two centre. We just bought in two centre backs, and you know he, he needs to go somewhere and get some games under his belt and find he's find play football. find his level yeah. this year rather he's than. Not make, he's, gonna, he's not going to make it, Pete. I've seen milk turn quicker than him. Um... <laughs> 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 okay, well, Domingos Quina has uh, has yeah, has come back know. from one loan and been thrown out to Rotherham. Yeah, Can you imagine yeah. basically being brought back from Portugal and being told, uh, "Yeah, by the way, no, uh, do you know where Rotherham is?" Rotherham. No, yeah, that, that's good yeah. news. I never, <laughs> never needs, thought anything of him. What he needs to do, Peter, is go to the uh, random book of nonsense on the Do Not Scratch Your Eyes website and look up my uh, look up my the write up. Of the of north. Yeah. yeah, 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 the guy to the north, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. The Bumper Book of Nonsense does provide basically cautionary tales of travelling to the north um, of Southampton. <laughs> Anywhere north, really. <laughs> <that's>... 
Oh, you remember that one in Man's Club that we, we, we uh, met up in, in Rotherham? That was a shithole, wasn't it? We're not supposed to talk about that on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Are we not? <laughs> no. Um, yes, it was not It was an absolute shithole. It's the only place that had a dartboard on the back of a door. So every time somebody <laughs> walked in, the dartboard went outside. <laughs> Which, which caused problems. I'm not going to lie. It was it was it was tricky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, well, oh, man, I, yeah. I just I got I got really fed up of throwing darts into the car park. I was like, the fuck? Not again. <laughs> it was the place that when you turn up in the car park, it it looked like a tip. There was just rubbish, and I thought there was a dog oh. tied tied to a me- to a skip. But it it was a dog, but I thought, oh my god, it's dead, it's not moving. And then when I got out to investigate said dead dog, it was in fact a stuffed toy. But it was chained up and I was I don't think we should go in here, guys. I think there's gotta be other places available. But in we went and then found that dartboard, which is incredible. So yeah. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So just uh, looking back at the at the the overall ins and the outs of the transfer window. There's your there's your reminder of some of the players that we we've, we've been bringing in. Let's do exactly what uh, what we were talking about earlier on. Let's have a grade A to E on what we think oh, the window GCSE. has been are we like. GCSE in it? We are GCSEing it absolutely oh, old school. You know I love this. Old, you know I love this. Old school, old school. Let's go across to Ian, who I think has been thinking about this because he, pro- he proposed the potential question there earlier on. What, what would you give our transfer window? It's one of the more positive transfer windows that we've had. I think there seems to be a little bit of thought behind it with with Porteous and, and Ferreira and perhaps not a somber longer, but um, Kone and Martin. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite optimistic about it. So um, I'll give it a B. A B, a B from Ian. Let's turn to Carlos. Carl, what do you think? Would you be pleased with a B, or would you go better still? Or no, I'm actually going to go the other way. I'm, yeah, I'm give it a C. Um, and and the reason behind that is I, I just just feel that we're one short. I just felt that there was a little bit more that could have been done in that window. And and as we've said, the two Portuguese lads, I, I think, will be okay. Brit Song Belonga, I just think they found him at a bus stop. And thought, oh, you used to be an ex-footballer. Come this way, same same bus that Bakuna got. So I just feel that there's that we've just not done enough for for my liking. I would have liked to have seen one more player come in. Um, hey ho, that's it. It's a C. Hey me. hey ho, you can't have hey ho. We had him in 2012, 2013. Uh, 2012, yeah, uh, well, to be fair, if he's still he kicking about, we'll shy. probably sign him. <laughs> yes, yes. Other other niche Watford squad jokes from 2012, 2013 are available. <laughs> this poor old Louis Tashira is going, what do you mean, hey-ho? How does that spell? Anyway, sorry. So, Carlos, I've got to ask the question. Bio, would you have rather have kept Bio and not bought in Brit Asomba longer? Which side oh, do you sit on? Great question. That's, That's a great, great question. question. I'm, it's yeah, a great it question. I mean, I, you, you know my love for the crow. So, I, do. I mean, I'm, I what do. I'm about to say here is I'm going to say, no, I've got, I've got to tell the truth. No, I, I, the, the crow <laughs> bothered me a lot, and despite me backing him completely, <laughs> fucking irritated the ass out of me. So, I'm actually quite glad he's gone. Um, <laughs> but do I think Brit Asombalonga is the answer? No, I don't. Fair enough. Fair enough. Wendover Horn, sir. What, what are you going to be giving as a grade for, for what we've seen? Which is, which has been quite a lot of the outgoings has been almost an un, unpicking of, of a lot of the things that went on in the summer. What have you thought about the well, uh, the January well, window? Well, you boys know I love a transfer window. Uh, oh, but, a I start, yeah, I do love a, I do love a transfer room and I do love a rumour and I do bore you with the uh, with these links to these potential signings, I know, but uh, so no, no, you don't, Greg. Sorry, okay, carry <laughs> no, on. Greg. But before I start, are we going to touch on the bio situation? Or go for it, gonna, go for it. Be a discussion for another day. No, what is that away. all about, boys? What is that all about? We buy him after he's been on loan. The club that's bought him out of his loan paid one point whatever million for him. We allegedly buy him on the, the next day for 5.8. We have him on loan for six months. And then, no, we, we, we buy him 
for 5.8. Yep. We, we have him for six months. Then we give him back to the club that's made a massive profit on him in the first place. Yes. What, yes. what, is, what is that all about? Or did we never pay 5.8 million for him? I am mystified. Absolutely well, the, mystified. The, the figures recorded was that he signed for Charleroi, who he had been on loan at the previous season, so that, you know, they knew what they were getting. They may have had it in a in a kind of part of the loan agreement that they had an option to buy, for example, at 1.5. And they might have thought, yeah, but yeah, we, bought, we bought him in. Um, he scored 12 goals in 21 games, so he's worth more than than the 1.5 and we can make some money to go to 5.8 4.3 million pounds was uh, sorry 4.3 million euros let me get that right was levied on it within 24 hours that does seem a little bit odd and when you figure in the fact that Moki Bayat's in the middle of it Mehdi Bayat his brother is the uh, is the managing director of uh, RCS Ch uh, Charleroi who is the, the team involved here that makes it very very poor indeed the fact that then uh, you know, monies have gone out and I'm sure loan fees have been paid to, oh, I don't know, perhaps an agent in the Belgian area. Um, it, it it stinks to high heaven. It really does. And it, it stinks to high heaven because from a football decision basis, it made very little sense to buy a player who was clearly overinflated and over the value that we were bringing him in on. When you hear how much you know, that, that Gino Pozzo prides himself in negotiating the best fees for his players to sign somebody for an over, you know, an absolute paying out through, through the nose over the odds to then simply loan him back and go and get another waif and stray, apparently near a bus stop in uh, a somber longer, according to Cal. It, it's, it's inexplicable. It makes no sense whatsoever. And whilst, whilst bio has been, yeah, he, you know, all, all sorts of strangeness was going on and the fact that he just walked off against Blackpool didn't endear himself to anybody but at least he did um, you know if not necessarily put the wording forward of the apology for himself at least he put his name to it and yeah, said yeah, yeah sorry fair yeah. enough I think I don't think people I think everybody was looking at it going well why is he gone and why is a somber longer come in it just seemed yeah. that didn't seem to be where the where the real real issues were odd yeah no, very I, odd I, I didn't think I didn't think Bayer was that bad. He wasn't a like-for-like -like Davis replacement. But if you played him in a two with the ball in front of him, running on and in the box, I think he would have been all right. But but we we we, we that's gone. That's gone. Okay, my mark up until yesterday was a minus. I think we started the window well. I think we continued throughout the window well. I think we finished absolutely appallingly. Um. Slav has asked for, asked for two players. Sounds like my six life, don't you know that? <laughs> he asked for a, yeah, yeah. Except, except the starting well part, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the starting well. No, no, I start well. I start well. He asked for a midfielder and he asked for a winger. He got he got neither. I don't actually think he partic particularly needs a winger, but that's by the by. He should have got his midfielder. And there was plenty being traded yesterday. Ben Pearson went out yesterday on loan. He would have been absolutely bang on ideal for us. Championship ready, ready to go. Uh, the one we missed out on, I hear, is Sissoko. Now, I know we've all yeah, got different weird. views on, on, on Sissoko. However, yeah. I think he would have been okay for the championship. And what, what stopped it happening was Sissoko was prepared to take a reduction in wage. The players all like him. Gino had sold him for 1.8 million and Nance wanted some of that 1.8 million back, which you can, which is understandable. Why, you know, but we wanted him on a free, but we wanted him on a free when, when we, we sold him six months ago for 1.8. Of course they're going to want something back. Shame on you, Gino. You should have made that happen. So my A minus drops to a B minus. B mi minuses. Oh, I liking this. Uh, Rich, Rich WFC two is going. Yes, well, well done, Greg. Don't go for the straight numbers. Start putting fractions in where they're not needed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, anyway. So who who do we need to get a? a, a I think I think Justin. I think we need to get. A, yeah, we need to get a grade from you, sir. Well, considering that um, we we didn't start the season with a particularly strong squad, I don't think. Um, I think this has strengthened it. I think that some of the, well, the fact that we've 
gone through all of our incomings, and I think only two of them got red X'd. Every, every, all the other ones we said okay to. Makes me think we've done okay. So I'm going to go for a B. I think we've done all right in this transfer window. Certainly better than the last January transfer window. Um, yeah. And possibly, possibly better than the summer transfer window as well, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, B. I think uh, I think the excellent. Oh, so so quite quite relatively positive. I think that we have seen a lot of the unpicking from from last summer for from things that haven't moved. So those players who we bought in who we thought were unsatisfactory who haven't managed to injure themselves, we've kind of moved on. It seems, um, but it feels like a changing of the guard. We've spoken about you know we've got Manga and we've got Helena Costa come in. Fresh fresh people are being seemingly bought in, potentially by out still being used as a, you know, kind of throwing him back out to uh back out Belgium way. What do we think that looking at these players overall, who do we think therefore is more in charge now from here till the end of the season? Is it Slavin Bilic or is it Ben Manga? Well, it's, or it's is it just Gino Pozzo no matter what? It's never the head coach, is it? It's always the director of football that seems to be in charge. So I would say Ben Manga myself. Yeah. 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 I'd, 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 I'd agree with that. Yeah. Everything I that's coming I... out of the club, you, you're hearing Ben Manga, Ben Manga, Ben Manga. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ben Manga is, is, is running the footballing side of that football club now but from top it, to bottom. Do you know what? If. You know, I've spoken about this before, and if that is the way that the club's going to go, and it, it, it seems, you know, no matter what happens, Gino Pozzo is going to make it that way. Ben Manga isn't the worst appointment we could have. You know, what he's done at Frankfurt no. and 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 everything that he appears to have done. You know, he's he's got a couple of players playing in the World Cup final that have, that have come through through him. I think that deal uh, with Mr. Crow, I think, might be a little bit of what for going, Mr. Bogey, Mr. Mogi Bar. We need to unpick some shit that you've caused us and that might be the reason that he has now gone back to uh, Charleroi so we'll see we'll see but I think this this transfer window is going to be an exciting one I think there'll be lots more movement uh, on that one because we will still be in my opinion a championship side so they're really going to have to um to, to to get the right players in just to finish on that bit we're not ready for the prim if we if we were to go up yeah, if we were to go up in May, we'd just come straight back down again. We're nowhere near ready to go up. Um, I think if we can prove ourselves to be quite good in the in the playoffs and not disgrace ourselves, then you know we can build on that. But no way are we ready for the Premier League. Nowhere near it. No. Not consistent. Justin, uh, yeah, are we a playoff team? Are we a t- we're, we're well, a type of team that might get to the playoffs, but we are the type of team that would win a playoff. No, no because not. you need to be well unless you start your um your momentum now and unless you start your form yeah. now if we suddenly click yeah. with these new signings and we start getting some momentum and we start being the team that's really difficult to beat then yeah, yeah. but on but, on what i've seen so far this season we're not even going to get out the semis but both our previous playoff uh winning teams had fight passion courage dedication this lot don't have any of that currently. They're a team. Yeah. They're a team as well. They had a lot of spirit about them. They ran through walls for each other. Spirit. They had spirit. Yeah. 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 We've, we've not got any of that. So sorry, Ian. I'll cut over you there. No, no, no. I was going to yeah, say sorry. you hit the nail on the head there with, with momentum. Um, we haven't had it all season. We, we drew three of the first five games. Well, that says it all for the season, really, doesn't it, for us? Um, we haven't got the momentum that some other teams have, have got in the league. Going up would be the, the worst thing for us because we'd probably end up having a worse season than we did did last season um, in terms of um, points scored. I just want us to finish one place or one point above that lot up the M1. Oh, I, yeah. I, that, that, yeah. that's, that's all I want from this season. Yeah, that's my new motivation. And I, I, I don't want to big up them too much and talk about them, but they've had a great transfer window as well. Haven't they, Just? They've signed some players that you've... They've signed some players that I would have probably snapped someone's hand off for. So they've also lost players, the Carl. They've also lost players. They lost yeah, yeah, players. I know um, Ben Ben Bray as well. He's uh, yeah, James Bray. Yeah. He, sorry, James, James Bray. Um, he he was playing for Southampton last night, wasn't he? So yeah, you never know, but uh, we'll we'll see. But it's going to make um, April Fool's Day a very interesting game, I think. So we've had three Bs and a C. What do we think, therefore, the position will be at the end of the 46 games? Outside of the playoffs, 
in the playoffs or is somebody completely deranged and thinks we're going to get past Sheffield United? We're going to win the league. Hey. HMS plays well, the league. Yeah, he is. Look, uh, I think, well, it's so hard because it's such a congested league. You know, one loss here or there and you're suddenly 10th. Um, but I, I I, think we'll probably end up in the top six. Uh, I don't think we're going to go up automatically. I think we'll end up in the playoffs and then it's all about momentum, isn't it? But on, on current form and from what I can see, I think we probably will end up in the top six, yeah. Ian, what are your thoughts? It all depends on that momentum, doesn't it, that we've just been speaking about and I'm struggling to see that we're we're going to get it. I I think top ten personally. I'd lo- I'd love it to be top six, but I I I think top ten. Ooh, so one outside. What do you think there, Greg? Playoffs, but we will be beaten in the uh, in the, in the in the semi, and we won't get to Wembley. Um, I I generally can't see us making the playoffs. I, I just think. Um, You've just touched on the air momentum. I, I see Sierra has now declared that he's broken his foot or something. So, you know, we're another player down somewhere. Um, top ten, I would take, uh, and just finishing above above that lot for this season. I think. I think what you're forgetting now is we got still got Pedro to come back. Uh huh. We've still got Semmer to come back. We've still got loser potentially to come back. You know, we've still I got a lot of good that. players cropped. You don't think? It's yeah, going no, to I agree. No, no, no. I, I, you know, I agree. We have, we've, we've got a lot to come back, but I don't know. I just, I have a sneaky suspicion that the season has taken its toll on, a, on, a, on players on the club that have been out injured, and those players that are injured are going to be rushed back. They're going to get, you know, loser. We've seen the training pictures that he's training. He shouldn't be being rushed back too quickly. Jao Pedro will be the same. They're rushing back too quickly. They're not going to be fully fit. I'm just going to be uh, pessimistic. I think so. Yeah, top ten. There you go. Well, I agree with Justin. I think with it depends on those players coming back as much as it does on the players that we brought in. I think we have strengthened. I don't think Benjamin Bloom is incorrect with that particular point because at the back where we've been saying for years and years and years, we need to have some dominant yeah. centre-backs. And I'm not suggesting in any way, shape or form that, that Hoot is going to be necessarily pr- the answer to the Premiership because he wasn't at, uh, at Southampton, but they did pay 17 million quid for him there. Um, so they were judging him on a different level to to what we've got him on. Um, as well as Porteous, we suddenly have options. We can suddenly go to three at the back and be, you know, potentially being able to play out from the back, have some things going on. We've got we've seen uh, a better options at, at right back. And if you do add in, you know, Semmer, if you do add in the potential of getting a fit Davis, if you do add in Britis Sombolonga, who you know, whilst we talked about him, you know, kind of, you know, he's behind a lot of other of, of other players. The one thing that we've missed when Davis has been out is somebody's inability to hold the ball up, and that's where Bio, I think, let himself down. It's something that actually Asamba Longa is quite accomplished at doing because he's not the smallest of secondary strikers. He's quite a he's quite a stocky lad. He's almost a um, an Akin Fenwa kind of kind of shape to him. I.e., he's not incredibly tall, but he's he's incredibly muscular, very hard to knock off the ball, so he can hold hold the ball up as well as being in and around the box. I think that might give us more than more than we suspect, but obviously we're going to interview him. So he's never going to be playing for us. Again. <laughs> That's fine. Um, you know, who, who knew the, the four, the four appearances he'd previously made were, were the heady height of his Watford career. Peter, I'd compare him a little, of course, not as good as Antonio at West Ham. Oh, bloody hell. I take that. I, 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 I compared, Keenan Davis on a good day for me is is Mikhail Antonio is a cheap man's okay. Mikhail yeah, yeah. Antonio. Yeah. I think um, a, f- a few years back, uh, my son and I had a had a discussion that that almost turned into an argument when it was the question about who could who would you take from the Premier League who you think would be the best player for us, and I said Mikhail Antonio because you know for all of the things we needed at the time, which was somebody to replace Dini muscular yeah. can beat a player can beat player, and he he, he he was like turning around and going. Really, really. So you don't want Mo Salah then? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we wouldn't know what to do with him. Whereas Antonio could fit in. You know, he'd, he'd be somebody who'd be uh, who, who would fit in well at the club. I, I would suggest, and I agree with you. That's potentially what he could be, even if it is going to be a somewhat cheaper version. 
who knows who knows yeah. so there we go there's the transfer window covered uh, we've we've covered everything from curacao to um you know uh, to, to to wherever it was some denius Spore, was it i think it was somewhere like that from from east to Pretty west so. uh, very much <laughs> we've we've dealt with I iconic uh 1980s pop stars and how they departed um we've dealt with bio and and biat players and how they've departed um it, you know i think we've been thoroughly comprehensive for once i think this was a good job um uh, only partly mangled by us brilliant well, there we go. That was our look back at January and the transfer window. I think we did that fairly comprehensively. I don't think we've left anything out whatsoever. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Greg. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Pleasure. Happy thank you very you. much for joining us, Ian. Cheers, guys. Really enjoyed it. Marvellous. We'll see you all down the bunker at the next home game. Uh, so long, everybody. Look after yourselves. You ones. You ones. Uh... Two